Sorry, I got cut off on the other one. I went over 15 minutes. So little gnome was getting her out, and he jabbed me with his pitchfork. He'd have drawn blood if I hadn't been quick. Zipping the bag shut from the inside, he went back to singing. This time I caught some of the words, which were mad and spiteful. Yes, your majesty. No, your majesty. I'd rather be at home in my whole your majesty. It doesn't sound like that gnome is very happy. His voice cut off as the zipper closed. Feeling bluer than mud, I sunk back to the bottom of the mine shaft, wondering if Mom and Dad and Grandpa and even my sisters were really my family. Even if they weren't, I felt a homesick ache just thinking of them. If I hadn't been so bothered by my resemblance to Stump's brother, I probably would have cried myself to sleep. Instead, I just cried myself awake. So now she's thinking she might be Stump's missing brother, Duckwad, who got turned into human because he didn't get the crickets. Chapter 33 The Valley A long time later, the trolls woke up and started grumbling about how they hadn't gotten any sleep. Actually, they stirred as much as fallen timbers the entire day and just sounded scared about their meeting with Bodacious Deep Think, the great rock troll. But even eventually, they shifted from fretting about Bo to describing what they do after they get their lucky crickets, finding their fathers, and coming home heroes. I forgot to show you the picture. There they are with Claire all bundled up. Going to visit the Nile, Jim Dandy bragged. I hear it's quite a river. Order a clamshell throne, Biz said. Sounds like Biz is hung up on being royalty. Find my brother, Stump wowed, vowed, trying tying up my wrists and ankles before anyone noticed I was been loose, and get my, back my collection of fish scales. Hearing that I hearing that didn't leave me feeling so too proud. If I was his brother, I mean, at least all the talk made the Trolls River braver. Pretty soon, they'd send Stump up the ladder for a peek outside. It's dark, he called down. We were off. Except for one piece of drif driftwood, they stashed all their mining equipment in the mine shaft, which they covered up with carpet. The piece of driftwood they dragged along was stout pole, twice my height. After tying me to the pole, Biz and Stump lifted it to their shoulders, which put me between them, hanging upside down. I can walk, I offered. No, you can't. Biz squeaked. When you see old Bo, Jim Dandy chuckled, you might decide to run. What about Duke? I was watching Jim Dandy untie my cousin's feet and hands. You're letting him walk. We need him to carry Bo's meal, Jim Dandy said. You mean banquet, Duke corrected, shouldering the heavy burlap sack that Jim Dandy had pulled out of the mining supplies. That's right, Jim Dandy said, clapping my cousin on the back. Banquet. Duke groaned beneath the bag of mutton and wheels of goat cheese, its weight explaining why they had wanted him to haul it. Jim Dandy even claimed he would have helped with the bag if he hadn't been wearing oven mitts and balancing the two jewelry boxes holding stars. I don't think he would have helped either way. As quiet as cats, we left the sandbar, crossed a marsh, and sloshed through a culvert that cut under the Wisconsin Highway. A couple of miles above Big Rock, we stopped at the mouth of a long, twisty valley that led away from the river. Remember, Biz cautioned, we don't answer any of her riddles. Woods covered the valleys, hillsides, pastures, and creeks filled with its middle. We stayed in the woods of an old Indian trail, or maybe it was an old troll trail. Our progress went like, like this, two steps and a stop, two steps and a listen. Nobody talked except to say, Shh. Even Duke, Duke buttoned his lip. The valley narrowed. We slipped by farms where watchdogs slept and hollow trees where owls blinked. The trolls' march meant it took most of the night to move up the valley, with me hanging upside down the whole way. At last we ran smack into a limestone wall and had to stop. Biz and Stump dumped me in a small grassy clearing before the wall which climbed straight up for 20 or 30 feet. We sat before the rock wall for the rest of the night, which lasted most of a century. Did it really last for a century, or are they just trying to say it lasted a really long time? When the pearly gray of false dawn finally arrived, the new moon came fleeing before it, rising up out of the earth as if chased by rock trolls, or it seemed. All I could see 
of the new moon was the faint silverly, silverly, silverly outline of a silhouette of a full moon. But with it came everything in the valley had been waiting for. First, I wasn't sure what it was. A sound? A touch? A shadow moving fast? I knew that only for a beat, everything everywhere stopped. The trolls locked in mid-breath. The stars lost their twinkle. The new moon got stuck. The valley waited. Then I realized it was a sound. A single trembly note cut through the woods like a mosquito buzzing through the tall grass. The note lingered for nearly a minute, making everything shivery. And then, when it was gone, on its heels, the rus a rustle swept through the valley as everything scrambled for a better hiding place. That was followed by a stillness that made you hold your breath longer than you thought possible. What was that? Duke asked, not sounding as if he really wanted to know. Bodacious deep think, Stump gulped. She's waiting, Biz squeaked. Boys, Jim Dandy quake, so are those crickets. A new, colder t note cut through the woods now, and there could be no doubt. It came from a rock wall before us. If my hands had been free, I would have covered my ears. Duke did cover his ears. The note didn't bother Jim Dandy, Biz, or Stump, though. In fact, it seemed to make up their minds for them or at le least make up Biz's mind. Enough talk, Biz squeaked, his voice so high that it disappeared at, a, at the end. Stepping up to the rock wall, he knocked on it the way you might knock on the door of a dark castle. Getting no answer, he knocked louder. That was when the earth started to shake. Stones scraped. In the middle of that rock face, a dark hole slowly opened from the ground up. Inside the cave, a lantern is coming toward us. Chapter 34, Bodacious Deep Think. Finally get to meet this person. A mountaintop must have once fallen on Bodacious Deep Think. She looked squashed enough. She also looked as though she were turning to stone. All the while she hobbled toward us, she grinned crookedly as a rock slide. Supported by the, now remember she's a rock troll. These others are river trolls and they have that fight going between them with the curses and everything. Supported by a wooden staff, she had three or four times the girth of a river troll. Girth means how big around, so she was bigger, rounder than they were. Though she was no taller, she had a bulgy eyes that clicked whenever she blinked, ears like tree fungus, and hair that sparkled like orange crystals. Her only snout vaguely resembled a river troll's, though without whiskers. Her fingers were like petrified tree roots, her toes thicker petrified tree roots. She wore a nylon bicyclist outfit, because remember they like those bicycle outfits that was tiger-striped and bulged like a parachute filled with gravestones. Her earrings were live bats, the kind with wings. You boys are running late, she grumbled, holding up her lantern for a better view of us. About that lantern. It was made of brass and glass and had a shooting star rolling inside it. Whenever that star dimmed, Bodacious Deep Think revived it by rapping on the top of the lantern with a stone key that made the same shivery note that had knifed through the valley. Well, that, this is why she needs those shooting stars to keep her, her minds all lit. Any of you boys belong to Two Cents Eel Tongues Brood? Bodacious Deep Think asked. Hearing that, Jim Dandy fainted, keeled right over. I'll take that as a yes, Bodacious Deep Think snickered. Anybody else feeling weak? Biz was too tongue-tied to squeak, although to his credit he at least opened his mouth. Stump covered his eyes with his hands, the way a two-year-old would when trying to hide. The only river troll with enough wits to answer wasn't a full fudge troll at all, but my cousin Duke. For the first time in my life, I felt kind of proud of the rat. Hey, Duke spoke out brassy as ever, we've come a long way to see you. Bodacious Deep Think held her lantern toward Duke for a closer look. And who might you be? She asked, amused by such freshness. Their assistant, Duke said. 
By then, Stump was peeking through his fingers, and one of Jim Dandy's eyes was open a slit. And this little morsel? she asked, holding up the lantern toward me. His conscience, I blurted. Quiet, you, Duke growled, giving the bottom of my shoes a kick. He might have given me two kicks, but as soon as his foot nicked mine, he let out a yelp and grabbed for his face as his horn shot out another inch. Easy. Something strange was going on with his hands, too. They seemed to be swelling. Well, 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 Bodicia's steep think was watching Duke's nose with interest. Do you boys mind if I ask you a riddle? Nobody objected. Remember, they're not supposed to answer it. Listen carefully, she instructed, clearing her throat as she recited. What is round when thin, fatter and black, sinks with a grin and never looks back? With a smirk, she dared us to answer. Duke checked with Jim Dandy, who quickly closed his eyes, although not before giving his head a small shake, no, and peeking at Stump, who shook his head no, and glanced at Biz, who shook his head no, without taking his eyes off of Duke, who for a moment had become their leader. For once, Duke did as he was told and stood there looking dumb. Everyone else kept, kept closed mouth too, which for me was an awful strain. You see, the answer popped in my head the instant I heard the riddle almost as if I'd heard it before. The moon. I could, where I could have heard such a riddle led me to thinking about a stump's brother again. Doc, Duckwood might have known an answer too, though just like Jim Dandy, Biz, and Stump, he most likely would have been too scared to say it. That's when I noticed another way that I was like a river troll. At the moment, I was too shaky to speak up myself. Come on! Bodacious deep think prodded, disgusted with our thickness. It's a simple one. Everybody looked at everybody again. We give up, Duke said at last. The moon, Bodacious deep think answered, and with that she slapped her knee, threw back her head, and laughed so hard that her, one of her bat earrings fell off and fluttered back into place. Nobody was laughing on our side, though, or maybe I... Or maybe I would have sprung the riddle two cents eel tongue had given me. Still, I was tempted. For one thing, it was a way to prove myself that I wasn't terrified. But two cents had said it would only buy me a little time. Trust up as I was, what good would a little time do? Trust up means tied up. So I bit my tongue and I waited. By then, Jim Dandy had come around enough to sneak behind Biz and Stump. Biz and Stump had taken a step back behind Duke. Boys, Bodacious Deep Think confided, there's nothing like a riddle to break the ice. People come up here expecting to meet dinner, but I had to give up eating these guests years ago. Heartburn. I'm on a special diet now. We know, Duke lifted up the sack of food he'd been carrying. You can't keep a secret in this valley very long, Bodacious Deep Think complained. Do you boys mind if I ask another question? A serious one. Hear me out. Setting her lantern down and resting both stony hands on her staff, the great rock troll closed her eyes to collect her thoughts. Keeping her eyes shut, she went on in a surprisingly soothing voice. So soothing means nice, like pleasant. Have you ever wondered if there might be some more to life than tipping canoes or snapping fish lines? Something more satisfying, I mean? Why, yes, Stump said, sounding as though she, as if she read his mind lowered his hands from his face in amazement. Have you ever wondered where you might find that something extra, she coaxed, that something that might add extra satisfaction to your life? Uh-oh, I think she's trying to get them in with her soft voice. I thought we were here for crickets, Duke said. Has anyone ever talked to you about the glories of rock? Bod Bodacious Deep Think asked a sweet smile, sliding across her bumpy face. Why, no, Biz squeaked, speaking for the very first time. His voice was nowhere near as high as I would expected. There's no greater peace in the world than living underground with good rock, Bodacious Deep Think sighed contently. Okay, so we're going to find out what she's up to tomorrow. <laughs>